The search for the meaning of life plagues more people today than ever. The existential crisis opens our eyes to see ourselves in the middle of a rat race. Our position is of little difference to that of Sisyphus, only that we don't roll the boulder up the hill to watch it fall for all of eternity. We only do so until our death. We search for a purpose to no avail. In this video, I'd like to offer a new source of meaning. First, we should look at the modern understanding of meaning. Meaning has a number of definitions, but it seems that the societal definition is that we have taken meaning and purpose to be synonymous. In the case of Sisyphus, most take his struggle to be meaningless because he doesn't accomplish anything. In the case of our own lives, we think that attaining wealth, fame, and power might give us meaning. And if you were to ask someone why they're doing something and they fail to come up with an answer, you might conclude that what they're doing is meaningless. Now, it isn't hard to see that this understanding of meaning has left many wanting. We wake up to experience an existential crisis upon the realization of our utter insignificance in the grand scheme of things. All of the work we do is for naught. When, given time, the things we build up crumble, and none of the wealth, fame, and power we may accumulate during life will prevent the crumbling of our own bodies. And even when we do accomplish something, that feeling doesn't remain for long. We have to continuously push for these new purposes, and yet none of it sustains itself. And so we've become subject to the slavery of ends. It isn't just our experiences that point to an inadequacy of meaning defined as purpose. Garrett Thompson, in his book On the Meaning of Life, provides a succinct argument against extrinsic purpose as the meaning of life. In this case, instrumental value is no different than extrinsic purpose. It is the for what of any action. We can take work for money as an example. We typically understand work to be meaningful because of the money that it gets us. But such an understanding in this case would leave the work itself meaningless because first, so long as we understand work as something done solely for the attainment of money, the job itself will be nothing more than a cost. Second, if meaning were instrumental value, then that which has meaning, in this case work, would be no more than a cost. Third. For the sake of efficiency, if we can make the money without the work, then we should dispense of the work as much as we can. Fourth, if working for money was truly meaningful, then we would not want to dispense of it. Therefore, so long as we understand working for money to be meaningful because of the money that it gets us, the work itself is not meaningful. The same argument can apply for all that is done solely for an instrumental value. Instead of meaning as purpose or instrumental value, we must find meaning in play. We can look to Moritz Schlick for a definition of what I mean by play. He defines play as any activity which takes place entirely for its own sake, independently of its effects and consequences. In this way, play is to be synonymous with intrinsic value or purposelessness. It is that which is done entirely for its own sake. Unlike what we had taken for meaning, Play as the meaning of life does not result in crisis. The two greatest examples of play are to be found in music and sport. When we listen to music, we don't do so to finish the song. If that were the case, songs would only be seconds long. Instead, we listen for the sake of listening, and in doing so, we embrace and enjoy the music. When we play a sport, while the goal may be labeled as winning, it's simply an excuse to play. The meaning is not found in winning, but in competing for its own sake. Many of our greatest moments happen when we forget accomplishments and embrace the moment. And these moments don't have to only apply to music, sport, and other conventional forms of play. Through changing our attitude towards our actions and doing them for their own sake, we can find meaning in everything we do. If I write a paper to pass a course, then the paper itself will be meaningless, and the experience will be dreadful constantly wanting the paper to end. But if I write a paper for its own sake, then the paper itself will be meaningful, and the experience will be delightful with my words flowing onto the page with no effort whatsoever. Of course, such a shift of perspective will not always come easily. Thus, we can cultivate meaning through the maximization of play and the minimization of purpose. Schlick offers a beautiful conclusion stating the last liberation of man would be reached if in all his doings he could give himself up entirely to the act itself. 
inspired to his activities always by love. A humanity free from the slavery of ends and a playful world is possible, but not through conscious effort. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave any thoughts you have in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Until next time.